Today's video is not sponsored. All right, so to go ahead and get started on this hanging pot holder, I'm going to be using this really gorgeous cotton yarn. And this is really unique because this type of yarn actually has a really gorgeous chain net construction. So it's not your usual four ply or eight ply yarn. It does have this really gorgeous chain net type of construction. And in case you guys are wondering exactly which yarn I will be using, this is the Lion Brand 24-7 Cotton. This ball of yarn is in the shade weight Camel and it is a number four medium worsted weight type of yarn. Although they do recommend using a four millimeter crochet hook, I'm actually going to be using a 5.0 millimeter hook. And I know you guys have probably seen these on my channel by now at this point. And these are one of my aesthetic holographic glitter sets that are soon to launch on my website. But here they are in all of their glory. I'm really excited to be using my own sets finally in my tutorials. So like I mentioned, I will be using my 5.0 millimeter crochet hook for this tutorial. And lastly, I'm gonna go ahead and use one of my plants for my collection. This is for a six inch pot holder. And this six inch pot is the dimensions that we're going to be working this plant holder around. All right, so to go ahead and get started on this pot holder, I'm actually going to start off with a magic circle or a magic loop. So to create my magic circle, I'm gonna take my short tail right here and just simply create an X or a twist with my fingers. And now I can go ahead and grab my crochet hook, reach into my circle and pull up my long tail. So now I've just created my cute little magic circle. And at this point I can go ahead and chain two. And this chain two does not count as a stitch. It's simply just the start of my row. So now that we have a cute little chain two at the very start of our row, to begin working on row one, I'm gonna go ahead and place 10 double crochet all into this magic center here. So I'm gonna yarn over and insert my hook, pull up a loop, and with three on, I'm going to yarn over and pull through two, and again, yarn over and pull through two. So that is our very first double crochet. And like I was saying earlier, this chain two does not count as a stitch. That's just going to be the stitch where we slip stitch into at the end of our row. So now that I have one double crochet, I'm gonna go ahead and add nine more double crochet all back into this magic circle. So there's my second, again, yarn over, insert and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So just continue to add these double crochets until you have a total of 10 in the middle. All right, so at this point, I've just finished up with my 10th double crochet here at the very center. And now I can go ahead and grab my short tail and pull and tug just to tighten up that center as best as we can. So you guys can see now that little gap in the center is closed shut. And now at this point, I can go ahead and slip stitch into the very top of my chain two space from the very start of our row. So I'm going to insert, pull through one loop and pull that loop through. So that is the end of row one. So to go ahead and get started on row two, like always, chain two at the start of your row, and this does not count as a stitch. So now for row two, I'm going to be working with a pattern of two double crochet into the top of each stitch. And by doubling up our stitches into each stitch space, we're just widening the volume or the width of our circle here. So I'm going into that very first loop and placing a double crochet. And again, I'm going to yarn over and go right back into that very first stitch in the row for a second double crochet. So now at this point, you guys can see I have my chain two here at the start of my row, which does not count as a stitch. And these first two stitches are all placed into the very first stitch from the row before. So now again, I'm gonna go ahead, yarn over and go into my next stitch in my circle and place my first double crochet. And again, yarn over and go right back into that same stitch and place your second. And just go ahead and repeat this process of adding two double crochet into each stitch in the row. 
All right, so I'm coming up here to the very end of my row two and I have one stitch space left. So I'm gonna go ahead and place my last two double crochet. Here is my second double crochet. And now here at the end of row two, like before, I'm going to find the very top of that chain two space and slip stitch my row together. So here's the very top of my chain two. I'm just going to pick up both of those top loops. It can be a little bit tricky sometimes just because the chain two is a little bit tight here at the start of the row. So if you'd like, you can only pick up the back loop or the front loop on that chain two space, but I really like just the look of picking up both of my loops. And now I've just gone ahead and finished up that slip stitch here at the end of row two. So let's go ahead and move on to row three. Again, we're just expanding on this circle and making it wide enough to fit around the very base of our six inch pot holder. So again, start with your chain two. And now here, the pattern for row three is going to alternate to adding two double crochet into every other stitch. So looking here at my very first stitch in the row, go ahead and pick that one up and place one double crochet like normal. Excuse the little bit of dog hair right there. So right here is my chain two and into that very first stitch in the row, I have one double crochet placed. Now I'm going to move on to the second stitch in the row right here. And this is where I will place my two double crochet. So here is my first. Again, go right back into that same stitch and place your second double crochet. So we're increasing our stitches on every other stitch. And it's just going to repeat like this for the entire row. So looking here for a next stitch, we're gonna start that pattern over again. Place one double crochet into that first stitch. And looking here at the second stitch, this is where I will place the two double crochet. So there's my first and back into that same stitch for a second. So as you guys can see, that circle is starting to expand pretty evenly there. And I'm just going to keep this process for the rest of row three. So again, one double crochet here, and then two double crochet into the next stitch. And I'm coming up here to the end of row three. This is my very last stitch in the row. So I should be placing two double crochet into this last stitch. And now again, like always, go ahead and find the very top of your chain two space. I'm just gonna wiggle my hook in there. It's a little bit tight. And go ahead and slip stitch this bad boy closed. Hello, there we go. <laughs> So here is what the end of row three looks like. So I'm just gonna to continue to add rows here to my circle until it's nice and wide enough to wrap around the entire base of my six inch pot. So again, I need to continue adding a few more rows. So start off with your chain two. And now the pattern for this row is going to be adding two double crochet into the third stitch in the row. So from the row prior, it was into the second stitch. So now here for the fourth row, I'm going to be working a double crochet increase into the third stitch in the row. So right here, I'm finding my very first stitch. Place one double crochet. Looking at my second stitch, place one double crochet. And now here at my third stitch in the row, this is where I will be placing my two double crochet increase. So there's my first, right back in, oops, for a second double crochet. So this is the pattern here for row four, and I'm just gonna continue this until I get to the very end of my row. So again, I'm working one double crochet, one double crochet, and now here, two double crochet. And now here at the end of my row four, again, find your chain two space and slip stitch your row together. So now at this point, the pattern is just going to repeat for several more rows. And like I said, because I'm not quite there yet, I think I have maybe one more row to go before I can finish up 
these increases for one more time hopefully i'm going to chain another two here at the start of my row and now the pattern is going to follow from the rows prior so i'm going to place three double crochet in a row and then into every fourth stitch is where i will be placing my double crochet increase so again here for row five i'm placing one double crochet move on to your next stitch one double crochet third stitch for my third double crochet and now here at my fourth stitch in the row go ahead and place your two double crochet so there we have it for row five so I'm just going to repeat this process of placing three double crochet in a row all right so I've just come here to the end of my row five and for one last time I'm going to slip stitch into my chain two space no surprises here I'm sure you guys are used to this pattern by now all right so there is my slip stitch and the end to my row five so it's going to be a little bit difficult to see because my pot is very tall and my filming angle is a little bit funky but now at this point i can go ahead and stop after my fifth row and just kind of double check to see if my circle here is wide enough to fit around the very base of my pot and hopefully you guys are able to see that it is just wide enough here so at this point i'm going to stop my increases and for row six i'm actually just going to be placing one double crochet into the top of each stitch because now that we have our circle I want my work to start working upwards instead of working outwards so I'm gonna go ahead and pick up here for row six so this should probably be the easiest row of all like always chain two at the start of your row and again just go ahead and place one double crochet into every single stitch so once you get to the very end of this round you're going to notice a huge change in the shape of your circle but that's exactly what we want we need this circle to start curving and giving us height instead of width so I'm just placing one double crochet into each stitch I'm trying to do this a little bit fast here a little speedy all right so I've just reached the end of row six and like always slip stitch into your chain two space so now we get to start having a little bit more fun with this pattern and I'm going to start working on the lacing or kind of like that macrame style look. So this is going to be the start of row seven for me. I'm going to start off with a chain of one and into my very first stitch here in the row, I'm just going to place one single crochet. So this is going to be the very start of our lacy section. And now at this point I can go ahead and chain five three whoops four and here is my fifth chain I'm going to skip one two three and here into my fourth stitch I'm going to work one single crochet so I'm chaining five to create this cute little gap here and I'm only skipping three stitches so I'm chaining five and working one single crochet into the fourth stitch from my work so to go ahead and show you that again, I'm going to chain five, two, three, four, and here is my fifth chain. And now I can go ahead and skip one, two, and three, and into this fourth stitch from my work, place one single crochet. So, so far I have two cute little like lacy sections and I promise it will look a lot more macrame style once we add a few more rows. So just continue this pattern of chaining five. So here's my chain of five and skip one, two, and three. Place my hook into the fourth stitch and create a single crochet. So we're just anchoring down our chain with a single crochet and again chain five skip one two three go into the fourth stitch and place a single crochet and I'm just going to repeat this pattern for pretty much the entire row and I will meet you back here at the end to show you how I finish off row one 
All right, so I'm coming up here to the very end of my first lace row. And as you guys can see, I still have one more lace chain section to create. I'm gonna create kind of like a little hack or like a little cheat code here. So to finish up my very last chain section, I'm actually going to start off with a chain of two. And at this point, I'm going to yarn over and place my hook into that chain one space from the start of the row. So we're kind of going to act as if we're placing a double crochet here. So I'm going to go into that chain one space and pull up a loop. And with three on my hook, I'm actually going to finish this row with a double crochet. So I'm going to pull through two and one more time, yarn over and pull through two. So now we've actually finished up this very first row, but as you guys can see here, I'm now at the very center of my chain or lace section, which is where I want to start my next second row here. So now that row one of this lace section is all completed, I can go ahead and start on row two, and this same pattern is going to apply for row three, four, and so on, just depending on how tall your pot holder is. So I'm going to start off with a chain one at the start of my row and going right into this huge open gap here across my chain five space, I'm going to insert my hook and place one single crochet. So kind of very similar to how we started row one, we started off with a chain one and a one single crochet. And now at this point, I can go ahead and chain five, two, three, four, and here is my fifth chain. I'm going to go right into this huge open lace gap right here and place a single crochet. So I'm really just picking up the very top or center part of that lace section. So as you can see, because I started my row here at the very center of my lace section, it's going to kind of flow a little bit more cohesive. So again, let's go ahead and repeat that process. Start with a chain of five. And after chaining five, go ahead, place your hook into the lace space and place a single crochet to anchor it down. So this is what that pattern is looking like so far. And I'm just gonna repeat this process for the entire row two. Alrighty, so like you guys can see here, I just repeated that same process of the chain five and single crochet all the way across row two here. And now that I'm coming up to my very last chain section, this is the very start of our row where that chain one space is. I'm gonna repeat that same process from the end of row one. So I'm gonna start off with a chain of two here, yarn over and pick up your chain one space. So I have the chain one space here on the hook. I'm going to pull up a loop. It's a little bit tight here. And now with three loops on my hook, finish out with your double crochet. So this is the end of row two. So I'm hoping you guys are liking this pattern so far. I really like using this like little technique of the double crochet. And I'm just gonna go ahead and repeat this a handful more times until it's tall enough to reach the very top or like the very brim of my potted plant. So again, I'm just gonna go ahead and show you row three of the lace section. I'm gonna chain one at the start of my row and go right back into this huge lace gap and place one single crochet. So this is the start of row three. And then again, at this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and repeat that same pattern from the prior two rows. So I'm gonna start off with a chain of five. And once again, find your next open chain space right here and work a single crochet. And this is how each and every single row is started and ended. All right guys, I'm back and I'm super excited because I finished up pretty much the entire pot holder. So this is what she's looking like right now. These are her cute little like lacy sections. But at this point, now that I'm finally completed with the majority of this pot holder, I actually worked up a total of seven rows with these little chain five lace sections. So now I'm ready to go ahead and pop this bad boy onto my plant just to show you guys what she looks like. So this is what the total of seven rows of lace looks like on my really cute six inch pot holder here. Guys, look at my plant, she's so cute. So at this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and show you guys how I finish up 
this pot holder. So like I said, I just left off here at the very end of my row where I slip stitched into my chain one space and I'm gonna go ahead, cut off my yarn and tie off a knot here at the very end of my seventh row. So now we can actually move on to adding the little tie straps or string ties to this pot holder. And this is seriously like the easiest part of the entire tutorial. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my ball of yarn and make sure I pull out a super, super, super long tail. I actually don't really have an exact measurement of how long I want these ties because it does kind of just depend on how long you want your pot to be hanging. So I'm just honestly just going to estimate and I'm pretty much choosing what looks to be about like a three foot or like a one yard length with my yarn doubled up like that. And I can just go ahead and cut off my yarn there. And I'm going to be duplicating this three more times so that I have four string straps in total. So there is my first one. All right, and here is my fourth little tie strap. So I'm just gonna start off by taking this first string right here. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and pick any point on my pot holder that I want to tie my tie strap to. And again, I'm just tying this to my last seventh row here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my looped tie strap and stick it into that lace open space right there. And then go ahead, open up your loop and just pull your yarn through. And that's it. I've literally just attached my double stranded yarn right here to the end of my seventh row. So again, now at this point, I'm just going to fold my work in half and find the exact opposite point. So right here. And now I can go ahead and grab my next little tie strap right here. And again, I'm going to insert it from the inside to the outside of my work, open up my loop and pull through my yarn and just tie off, fasten off a tight little knot right there. So there is my next one. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and bring up all four ties to the very center. I'm just making sure not to hit any of my leaves. And now that I have all four of these tie straps held up nice and high, I'm just gonna go ahead and literally tie off a knot. So I'm just grabbing all of this yarn and I'm literally just tying off a knot. All right, and here she is. Here's my very simplistic little knot here. And then just go ahead and slip this knot like this over whatever plant hook that you have. All right, so I've actually been using this plant hanger for a few days and I think it's really cute, but I feel like it's missing a little something kind of like on the bottom edge. It looks a little bit plain. So I think I'm gonna hop back on here just to show you guys how I add a few or actually a ton of tassels to the very bottom of this plant hanger. That way it kind of looks like a lot more boho and chic and there's just like a lot of fringe pretty much hanging off of the very bottom. So I think the way that I'm gonna go about this is I'm gonna cut a bunch of strands of my yarn and I'm just going to loop them through and tie off a knot and have a bunch of strings hanging pretty much from that very last round of regular double crochet. So at this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut off a bunch of strands of yarn and the length of the yarn doesn't really matter because at the very end I'm going to go in and trim them up anyways but I'm thinking that I do want roughly this long of a strand of yarn hanging off of the bottom of the pot holder so I'm just going to go ahead and double strand each cut of my yarn and this looks to be about six or seven inches long again with it doubled up like this so I'm just going to go ahead and cut off about 10 or 15 of these strands of yarn but I'm thinking somewhere about right here at the very base of my last row of double crochets is where I'm gonna go ahead and just loop through my yarn. And I'm pretty much just gonna use whatever crochet hook I have at my disposal. So right here I have a 5.5. So like I was saying, I'm gonna go into the base of this last row of double crochets and just pick up any old loop that I can find. Go ahead and wrap your yarn around your hook and pull it through that little space right there. So now that I have this cute little loop formed right here, I'm just going to bring my yarn through for a standard knot like this. And then I can go ahead and pull tight. So now I have my first really cute little tassel right there. And I'm just gonna do my best to space these out pretty evenly and just place one every couple of stitches until I have a nice amount of these strings hanging down. All right, so I just got done adding on all of my tassels to the very bottom of this hanging pot holder. And now at this point, I'm gonna spend a good amount of time 
physically unwinding all of my strands. I feel like it looks a little bit, you know, kind of like spaghetti. So I'm just gonna take some time and really just do my best to unravel the strands one by one and hopefully it'll make it look a little bit more full. 